Welcome to the Legal Roundtable. I'm Shaniqua Gray. Tonight on the Legal Roundtable, free legal services. Yes, we have representatives here who will be talking about a full range of legal services that are provided to low-income people. They'll be talking about what services they provide as well as how you can qualify and access those services. And then later on the Legal Roundtable, we're talking about the Baton Rouge Area Violence Elimination Project. It's also known as BRAVE, and it's the city's latest crime-fighting initiative designed to significantly reduce crime in Baton Rouge. We've got a great and very beneficial show lined up for you tonight, so you definitely won't want to miss this edition of the Legal Roundtable. Welcome back to the Legal Roundtable. In this segment, we're talking about free legal services that are provided to low-income people. And our guest is the Directing Attorney of Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, Ms. Sarah Campbell. She's talking about what services are provided and how you can qualify and access those services. Ms. Campbell has been the Directing Attorney for Southeast Louisiana Legal Services for the last year, but has over 33 years of experience in handling legal services, overseeing a full range of various legal services provided by the organization. Welcome to the Legal Roundtable, Ms. Campbell. Thank you very much. I'm very happy that we're doing this show because this is a topic that was one of the primary reasons why I wanted to do the Legal Roundtable so that we could provide beneficial information to our guests and this is definitely at the top of the list. Could you tell us, Ms. Campbell, exactly what is Southeast Louisiana Legal Services and um, tell us what do you all do and how long have you been doing it? The <clears throat> Southeast Louisiana Legal Services is a private nonprofit corporation. We're primarily funded with funds from the federal government, the Louisiana Bar Foundation, and a number of other organizations uh, who provide us with various grants. Our purpose is to provide free legal services in civil matters only to poor people. Uh, we have a sliding scale based on the number of people in the household and the income to the household. So it's roughly 125% of poverty, although we can go up to 200% of poverty. Okay. Now, Ms. Campbell, you all definitely handle a broad range of various types of cases, so I want to go through some of these with you. Could you tell us about certain consumer protection types of issues that you all handle? We do a lot of uh, collection defense. Mm -hmm. We also do a great deal of uh, contract fraud, various things like this. It is um, a matter of um, the most urgent things of clients' lives okay. is okay. what we do. What about family and domestic violence types of issues? Because I understand that would have to be a very important issue that many people are in need of. This is our, one of our major priority cases. Uh, we do a great deal of domestic violence cases from protective orders through divorce, custody, visitation, child support, permanent injunctions. We try to provide a broad range of services in that area so that families can become more stable and secure. Now, I also understand that a lot of people are in need of issues dealing with successions and wills and things of that nature. Could you tell us about those types of issues you all handle? We do wills, and by the way, we also do powers of attorneys, mm -hmm. health care powers of attorneys, uh, and other uh, similar matters. We do successions in cases where the client needs to be maintained in that home. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, if they will end up with title in mm -hmm. their name, then we go ahead and do a succession for them. Okay, and just so that our viewing audience will, will know, a succession is a situation where a person has passed away and they want to be brought into possession, the heirs want to be brought into possession of that property. And um, you all would handle those types of cases. That is correct. Okay, and um, also elderly services. I know that that would be something that would most that some elderly people might be interested in. Are there any other elderly services that you all would provide? We do actually a great many elderly services. Uh, we also provide assistance with Medicaid, mm -hmm. uh, nursing home issues, and 
uh, disability, mm -hmm. uh, Medicaid, mm -hmm. a number of things that the elderly are involved in. Okay. The elderly also has have a uh, large number of consumer cases mm -hmm. that uh, they need assistance with. So it seems like you all do a lot of government type of benefit cases as well with the social security and di disability and all of that. That's correct. We okay. also do unemployment and other types of benefits. Okay, so this is definitely a full range of services. How does a person qualify for this? Do, and do they need to bring anything with them when they come to qualify? Well, actually, there are three ways uh, to apply for our services. We try to make it as convenient as is possible. What we do is we will take applications by phone. They need to contact us by phone. We'll do it over the phone. And in most cases, they will talk to the attorney the first time by phone. Mm -hmm. You can uh, come into our offices. We'll do an application in person, if that's your preference. Or you can do an application online via the computer. Do they have to make an appointment to come into your office? No, they do not. And what telephone number should they call if they're looking to, make, to uh, place a call with you all? Our uh, or web address. Our web address is uh, www.sLLs.org, mm -hmm. and the application uh, phone number is two two five. 448-0331 or long distance it's 855-512-3980 and we do applications from 8.30 to 5 o'clock. Now of course please don't wait until 5 o'clock to call us because it takes a few minutes to do an application. And now I would imagine with this type of service you need a lot of volunteers. Yes, we do. And not only from lawyers, but you take volunteers from law students as well as general citizens? Yes, we do. What and would they we, need to do in order to volunteer? In order to volunteer for us, they just need to contact our regular number, which is 225-383-1087, and ask to speak to me, Sarah Campbell, or to our uh, public Equal Justice Works fellow who is Rob Owens okay. and uh, indicate that they desire to um, volunteer. Presently we have a nurse who is volunteering and assisting us with interpretations of medical reports. Okay, well Ms. Campbell, this is very helpful information. I am sure that our viewing audience will be thrilled that you were here to, this evening providing this information for us. I appreciate you coming here this evening and we'll be right back with more from the Legal Roundtable. I'm Shaniqua Gray. If you're a lawyer and you would like to be a guest on the Legal Roundtable TV show, call Shaniqua Gray at 225-772-1819 or email to the Legal Roundtable at Herzog.com. Welcome back to the Legal Roundtable. In this segment, we're talking to the representatives of two local bar associations talking about specific legal assistance that is provided to help low-income people. We have the chair of Pro Bono Committee from the Baton Rouge Bar Association, Professor Ken Mayo. He's also an assistant clinical professor of law at LSU Law Center and director of the Immigration Law Clinic. We also have the president of Louis A. Martinet Legal Society. He's also an assistant attorney general for the state of Louisiana. Welcome, gentlemen, to the Legal Roundtable. Thank you. That's great. Professor Mayo, let's begin with you. You are the chair of Pro Bono Committee at um, the Baton Rouge Bar Association. And um, I know that you all do not provide direct legal representation through the committee necessarily, but you have a number of pro bono programs that are designed to help the general public. Could you tell us about those programs? Sure. We have a couple of what we call short advice clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a self-help center that we sponsor through the uh, Baton Rouge Family Court. Mm -hmm. And then one of our kind of umbrella areas is that we do accept referrals from the uh, Southeast Louisiana Legal Services where we place people who need representation with pro bono attorneys who will represent them directly. Now tell us about this Self-Help Resource Center. Where is it located and what do you do through that? So the Self-Help Resource Center is a real, uh, it's a new program that we just started this year 
And this is a program to help self-represented litigants get help uh, filling out their initial forms in kind of simple family-related matters like divorce and custody. Mm -hmm. uh, we have law student volunteers who help the people fill out basic forms that have already been approved by the court. And then we give them basic filing instructions. We have a supervising attorney on staff uh, there to help uh, notarize documents. But basically, it's just to help people represent themselves without being represented by an attorney. And this is family law issues only? Family law only. And where is it located? It's in the family court in East Baton Rouge Parish, which is in the regular courthouse, fourth floor. Okay. Now, you all also have a program called Thirst for Justice. Yes. What is that? Thirst for Justice is over 10 years old. Um, in Thirst for Justice, our volunteer attorneys provide uh, short legal advice uh, every Wednesday and Thursday afternoon at the St. Vincent de Paul Center. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can come in and talk to an attorney about their problems and get some initial direction okay. on their legal issues. And so that's Wednesday and Thursday afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m. at St. Vincent de Paul Center? Yes. Okay, and is there any type of income requirement for that that's just free for anyone to walk in? That one is a, is income-based. Okay. We also have a second uh, kind of general walk-in clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it Ask a Lawyer, mm -hmm. and it's sponsored several times a month at different community centers and public libraries. Um, you can call the Bar Association to figure out where that is. And that okay. one's not income-based, but it's very similar. People can come in and uh, speak to a volunteer attorney to get just some initial counsel and advice on um, their legal issues. Okay, and they can contact the Baton Rouge Bar Association at 344-4803 or on the internet at www.brba.org. Is that correct? That's right. Brba.org to find out more information about those clinics. Now, Mr. Tyler, you're president of the Louis A. Martinet Legal Society, and um, Louis A. Martinet also has a number of pro bono programs set up to help the general public. Is that correct? That is correct. Could you explain those programs as well? Uh, sure. Um, right now, we've been a seminar-based program mm -hmm. providing legal seminars to different communities throughout the city of Baton Rouge at various community centers. Right now, our home is the Leo S. Butler Center, but we also work out of the Martin Luther King uh, Community Center, which is on Gus Young, and we've also uh, done a seminar at the Jewel Newman Community Center, which is mm -hmm. in North Baton Rouge. Um, these really help a lot of individuals gain general knowledge of some of the issues that may be faced with and then if they need more specific information they can call into our office which is at the Leo S. Butler Center mm -hmm. uh, and try to contact an attorney to provide more information and in responses to their specific questions. Okay, do you have the number for Leo S. Butler Center? Yes, they can reach us at uh, 389-4860. Okay, and they can go there anytime. What hours is Leo S. Butler Center open? Uh, Leo S. Butler is a community center. It should be open from the hours of 8.30 to 4.30, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they can come in at any time and request to see someone. If we're not there, the community center personnel will take a message and get in contact with us, or they'll refer it directly to me in my office, and I'll get someone in touch with them. And so there, that would not be full representation, but they get information and possibly referrals to attorneys at that center? As of right now, that is correct. However, come July, we'll, we will be doing referrals uh, similar to what Ken stated. Uh, we will be contracting with Southeast Legal Services to provide caseload work for them, uh, representing clients in various cases that are assigned to us. Uh, the subject okay. matter that we will handle right now is not definite, mm -hmm. uh, but we will provide those services. But as far as that full representation, whether it's for the Baton Rouge Bar Association or Louis A. Marnett, that is something they should contact Southeast Louisiana Legal Services and they will place those cases with the organizations, correct? That is correct. Uh, if they do contact us, uh, we will still send them back through Southeast Legal Services. Mm -hmm. Southeast will conduct intake and then they will send them back to us. Now, Professor Mayo, you all also have a program called Wheels for Heroes. Could you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, several times a year uh, we get volunteer attorneys from our membership uh, who volunteer to do wills for first providers, mm -hmm. so for um, policemen and firemen. Uh, and this is a great program to uh, 
help them with their uh, estate planning issues. Mm -hmm. That's just wonderful. Well, I'm glad you all were able to stop by and tell us about these programs that you have because, you know, we have a lot of people, a lot of our viewing audience are interested in knowing who they can contact to get advice and information and basically some guidance as to where they can go and uh, receive further representation. So I appreciate you all coming on the show and we'll be right back in just a moment from more from the Legal Roundtable. If you're a lawyer and you would like to be a guest on the Legal Roundtable TV show, call Shaniqua Gray at 225-772-1819 or email to the Legal Roundtable at Herzog.com. Welcome back to the Legal Roundtable. In this segment, we're talking about the Baton Rouge Area Violence Elimination Project. It's also known as BRAVE, and it's the city's latest crime-fighting initiative designed to significantly reduce crime in Baton Rouge over time. And we're talking to the new director of the program. It's Police Sergeant Herbert Tweedy Annie. He's a 22-year veteran police officer reassigned from the Violent Crimes Unit to oversee the project. Welcome, Sergeant Annie, to the Legal Roundtable. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Now, I understand that this new project has been proven to be effective in large cities such as Boston and Los Angeles, modeled after Operation Ceasefire. Could you tell us exactly how this program works in Baton Rouge and how we're going to see this significant reduction in crime? Yes, ma'am. It's very similar to Operation Ceasefire that initiated in Boston approximately 15 years ago. Basically, we just modified it so that it would fit to our city. We're going to use the same implementation guides that they used. It consists of actually three components. The first component is community. The second component is social service providers. And the third component is law enforcement. Now let's talk about this community component because I understand that you all have brought in various aspects of the community from faith-based education and so forth. Tell us about different um, aspects of the community that are involved in this. Yes, ma'am. To begin with, uh, within that 70805 zip code, mm -hmm. that's where the grant is targeted. And mm -hmm. the reason being is because that's where the uh, statistics show the most prevalent area for the violent crimes occurred. Mm -hmm. Well, within the community aspect, we have 15 churches that are on board already. And members of those churches have offered their assistance as far as being mentors, as far as helping out financially, any some are retired educators so we showing a really good seeing a really good turnout with the faith-based community in addition to that we have business leaders uh, even large businesses such as Exxon and energy mm -hmm. they are on board in addition to that we have uh, council persons um, elected officials just basically concerned citizens who care about their neighborhood and want this violent crime to reduce now, um, you, you said that a second component is social services, and I understand that based on the way this program is set up, they, it, it um, entails a number of strategies that you all will be using, and one is to, when you call these individuals in, you offer them alternatives. So is that where the social services com come in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Could you uh, explain that? What we learned was that some of these individuals commit crimes because they were on drugs or have some mm -hmm. type of drug addiction. Uh, if that's the case, we have drug rehab personnel on board to address that problem. Others um, involved are, have illiteracy problems. Mm -hmm. they, some of them don't have their GEDs, where we will have personnel also on board so that they can t continue their education and perhaps get a GED. Some have finished high school and need job placement job placement persons will be on board to help assist them in locating jobs. Others are looking for vocational training. We have people on board to help them with their careers. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, we have mentors that will be on board. A large number of them do not have both parents in their lives, do not have a mother and father in their home. So we have a large number of people that are willing to assist by serving and functioning as mentors. 
Mm -hmm. And finally, the third component is law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And they will behave in a manner slightly different than what they have in the past. We've seen that just simply arresting people, putting them in jail, has not worked. There's no change in behavior. Now, the law, law enforcement, instead of just being focused on placing people or incarcerating people, they're going to reach out, try to become to know the people in the neighborhoods that they are assigned, mm -hmm. try to genuinely establish rapport with them so that they can open a line of communication, whereas the general public would trust the police officers enough to share vital information to them, not only to crimes that have already been committed, but crimes that are about to be committed so that law enforcement could possibly intervene and stop the crime from actually happening. Now it sounds like this project really does entail though identifying these potential offenders. Yes, How do you all propose to do that? I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, the last three years I've been si assigned to the Violent Crimes Unit mm -hmm. and just like we mentioned a collaboration and a collaborative approach, the law enforcement agencies, the local law enforcement agencies have joined together. In the past, it's just been Baton Rouge City Police, mm -hmm. East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office, State Police, and each entity would receive their own intelligence and mm -hmm. make their own, conduct their own investigations. Now, all of these agencies have come together and work out of the Louisiana State Police headquarters. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an information sharing system whereas they can address the effort more effectively. Mm -hmm. With that said, during this time, intelligence divisions from each agency has obtained a list of persons that are creating the most violent type crimes, the homicides, the aggravated assaults, and the armed robberies. We have a list of those people already, and that's how they were compiled. Mm. Wow. When it's time to call these individuals in, mm -hmm. that's when the representatives from the faith based community, mm -hmm. the social service providers, and law enforcement all will be present. Then instead of, like I said, disciplining them, we will give them an alternative to their behavior. Okay. And we pray that they will take advantage of these opportunities to have alternatives to mm -hmm. this group violence and be able to sustain a lifestyle where they can be productive members in the community. So basically this strategy entails identifying the offenders, confronting them, and, and letting them know that you all are aware of their, their violent conduct. Exactly. You all will advise them of the, of the consequences of their conduct if they do not stop doing what they're doing. And you all offer them alternatives. And then I would assume if they do not take advantage of those alternatives, they're going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. That's correct. Now, tell me a little bit about this particular zip code that you all are beginning with focusing on here in Baton Rouge, 70805. We want to know exactly what parts of town does that entail and why is it that you all focused on that area? Okay, we focus on that area because we allowed a statistician to conduct um, an investigation on what particular area had the largest amount of violent criminal activity. Mm -hmm. And when that survey was completed, we identified 70805. What we found was that 25% of all calls, all law enforcement calls, pertain to 70805. 30% of all homicides in the city were attributed to 70805. 40% of the aggravated assaults, 70805. So, and 25% of all of the robberies were connected to 70805. Therefore, we figured wow. instead of just targeting the whole city, we could specifically address 70805 because it mm -hmm. had the most severe activity. Okay, and so um, how long should it be before we start to see results? Well, I'll tell you what, at present, approximately a month ago, the city council allocated approximately $150,000 $150, to get the program kicked mm -hmm. off. Um, 
right now we're busy going out in the community mm -hmm. using electronic media as this to get the word out so that we can get people involved. Um, we hope to secure this grant mm -hmm. and if so we will have it by October mm -hmm. hopefully the first of October okay. and then we can start implementing what we're talking about today. Well, we hope that we see results very soon, and we thank you all for your very hard work in making Baton Rouge's streets safer, and we're looking forward to assisting this project in any way possible. Good. That's all thank we have you. time for today on this edition of the Legal Roundtable. We hope that you join us next time for the next edition of the Legal Roundtable.